The 2011 Brickyard 400 was the 18th running of the race at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The event took place at the end of July on the 31st and was the 20th race on the 2011 NASCAR Cup Series calendar. With clear skies and the temperature 80 degrees, it was a perfect day for racing. David Reagan was able to put his number 6 Ford Roush Fenway Fusion on the pole position, with Red Bull Racing's Casey Kane starting alongside him on the front row. Well, the weather's warm. It's a beautiful summer day. The fans are on their feet. They've been waiting all day for this moment. The drivers as well, anxious for their once a year chance to race at Indy. Green flag, we're underway. Through the first two corners, Casey Kane in the four car takes the lead. Yeah, that's a really a power move on that high side. Not a lot of grip up there, but Casey Kane made it work. Casey Kane would take the lead from the outside from David Reagan, and he would lead and stretch it out until he would come in for a green flag pit stop on lap 25. Over the next four laps, the entire field would make their green flag pit stops, and Casey Kane would cycle back around to the lead with Jeff Gordon in second. On lap 34, Tony Stewart, who was just in front of leader Casey Kane, would catch a huge break as the first yellow flag of the day would come out for debris, as Tony had to serve a drive through penalty penalty for speeding on pit road. Some drivers decided to hit pit road here, but most of the leaders would stay out on the racetrack. There was a bit of a nerve wracking situation under this yellow as the pit road commitment cone was knocked over, so an official had to go out there and fix it. Unfortunately, he put it in the wrong spot, had to fix it once again, but at the same time, for some reason, pit road was open, and while the guy was still on the racetrack and a safety truck right in that area, some drivers were electing to come down pit road but others like Jimmy Johnson made a last minute decision to not hit pit road and it was a pretty close call with the safety truck in that area. Casey Kane would lead the field back to green for the restart. Montoya getting him loose there. It's saved by Mark Martin, but he's going to lose a few spots here. The same when he looked at his mirror and saw Montoya back there, he was probably ready for it. <laughs> it's kind of a common theme, but uh, you see last year's winner, Jamie McMurray, up on the high side trying to go around. I believe that's Landon Castle in the 51. And Landon stayed out under that last caution. Yeah, let's uh, now that they've sorted this out a little bit in this opening lap, reset some of that strategy play. We just saw 10 cars did not pit under that yellow. Kane, Gordon, Johnson, Martin, Montoya, Hamlin, McMurray, Truex, Castle, and Jeff Burton. Matt Kenseth was the first who did pit under the caution. He restarted in 11th. Not long after the restart on lap 45, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had to come to pit road under green to remove grass from his grill to prevent his car from overheating. At first, this seemed like a huge blow to Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s chances, but this would in fact be a little blessing in disguise. As only five laps later, David Rudiman would hit the wall and the yellow flag would come out. Uh, oh, looks, looks like, like a tire. Did, yeah, definitely looked like a right front went down. All the leaders would end up hitting pit road, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. would stay out on the racetrack, having topped up on fuel when he pitted, and would take over the lead of the race. Some drivers would also only take two tires on this pit stop to gain track position, and previous leader Casey Kane would have to restart in 10th. Pace car will head off here. It'll be Earnhardt Jr. inside of Reagan, Kyle Busch, and Jeff Gordon side by side in row number two. And behind them, Jimmy Johnson, Doubled up with Matt Kenseth as they come to the green flag for the restart and crank it back up into turn number one.
Dale Jr. would lead the next five laps before surrendering the lead to Jeff Gordon on the back straightaway, as there was still a lot of give and take back then with no stages. Green flag pit stops would start on about lap 71, but leader Jeff Gordon would come in on lap 81, but when things would cycle through, Jeff Gordon would retake the lead of the race. The caution would come out for the third time of the day on lap 94 for debris on the back straightaway that Kevin Harvick unfortunately hits here. This yellow would once again bring all the leaders down pit road for pit stops with Matt Kenseth who seemingly came out of nowhere winning the race off pit road. Paul Menard who was the only driver to stay out under this caution would lead the field back to green with Matt Kenseth beside him. Paul Menard did not pit. He is the leader with Matt Kenseth alongside him as they come to the restart and we get ready to hit the eyes on speed zone. Despite being the only one to not pit, Paul Menard did a damn good job keeping his car out front as he managed to hold the lead for a total of 9 laps before Matt Kenseth finally got around him. And when Matt did, it was pretty damn close to ending Paul Menard's day. On lap 114, we would see the fourth caution of the day after Kyle Busch would get into the outside wall coming out of turn number two, putting debris on the racetrack. Kyle would kind of hit an awkward area where there's a gate, and even though the contact with the wall was relatively minor, NASCAR still felt they needed to throw the yellow. This would be a pretty quick yellow and the majority of the field would come down pit road here. However, there was a few guys that elected not to, including Brad Keselowski who would take over the lead of the race. The top four drivers on the racetrack stayed out. Juan Pablo Montoya was the first one off pit road with a two tire stop in fifth. Oh, contact, contact. there. Murray in the 51. See some dirt flying. a lot of dirt and grass flying down there you have to wonder if somebody else isn't going to get their grill plugged up landing castle in the 51 car for james finch who stayed out on this restart was trying desperately to hold the field behind him and there was some contact made fortunately for him he was able to get away with that one but just a few laps later he wouldn't get away with this one here comes jimmy johnson trying to make a pass on the outside three went four wide was it's not gonna work Landon Castle. A lot of cars coming behind here, guy. though. Look out! Casey Kane sliding through. My track narrows up in a hurry. You see all the grass on Casey Kane's car. He's going to make another pit stop here to get it off. This got crazy. Yeah, yeah. you can see Jimmy there gets actually into the wall just a little bit. They're making it three now, four wide. You see the big pull. Denny Hamlin even got a big draft from that. Yeah, and three of those are normally very conservative drivers that we see making that uh, situation of four wide with Reagan, Kenseth, and Jimmy Johnson. But it's getting time to do things in this race now. Thankfully, the incident was relatively minor with just a few cars spinning, including Casey Kane, who got in the grass, and Paul Menard, who didn't spin out but had to go through the grass to take evasive action. But because of that, he would actually end up hitting pit road here while all the front runners stayed out on the racetrack. As the majority of crew chiefs felt that this was still outside the fuel window to make it to the end. And as the yellow flag remained out for that extensive grass cleanup, those drivers elected to keep hitting pit road to top up on fuel knowing that there is a chance that they can make it to the end from here. Gonna get the restart with 34 laps to go. Brad Keselowski, the leader in the two, has chosen the outside lane. Gets a little bit of a jump on Jeff Burton in 31. The action after the restart has been so intense all race long. <laughs> 
Now we did not know it at the time, but this would be the final restart of the race. And it would go green to the end from here. And just four laps after the restart, Brad Keselowski and several others would hit pit road to make their final stops of the day, with Jeff Burton and Jimmy Johnson coming in on the previous lap. As from this point on, there was no question that they can make it to the end of the race. A few drivers would get credit for leading over the next few laps as they all went in to make their pit stops. But on lap 134, Tony Stewart would take the lead of the race and was trying to play a different strategy, staying out long, hoping for a caution flag towards the end. And he would lead a total of 10 laps here, but unfortunately, this strategy wouldn't work out for him and he would have to hit pit road as well. With 15 laps to go, Paul Menard would take the lead of the race, but he was on maximum fuel saving mode as his chances of making it were actually still pretty slim. Him. Jeff Gordon, who was running in 13th place 16 seconds behind Paul at this point, was sitting in the catbird seat if these guys could not make it on fuel, and even if some of them could make it, Jeff Gordon was lapping way faster than these guys and closing in on them at an extreme rate. As the field came to 8 to go, Jamie McMurray, who was on the same strategy as Paul Menard, would make a move on the front straightaway going towards turn number one and would take over the lead of the race as he looked to ruin Paul Menard's big day. But with four laps to go, Paul Menard would make the move in turn number two, getting back past Jamie McMurray and taking the lead of the race. Does he have enough fuel to make it? And can Jeff Gordon catch him? He's not too far behind now as you can actually see him now in the lead draft. Coming to only two laps to go, Jeff Gordon has nobody in front of him except for Paul Menard now. And the odds were definitely stacked against Paul Menard as he figured there's no way he was going to be able to hold off Jeff Gordon here. Especially with how fast Jeff Gordon has been all day. Coming to the white flag. Drive the hell out of it. Come on. One lap to go. The Brickyard 400. Bernard dealing with lap traffic. Gordon trying to close in turn one. Bernard is cleared out. Gordon, he's got to deal with the traffic. He's got enough fuel. Looks good. That might be enough now. Yes. Looks good so far. This is going to be the biggest day of Paul Menard's life. But does he have enough fuel to get to the finish? Gordon clear of traffic, setting up for the finish, final corners. Paul Menard with the biggest win of his career, his one and only NASCAR Cup Series win, and doing it with an impressive fuel mileage run to the end, and making sure he had enough fuel to hold off Jeff Gordon. People could say what they want about Paul Menard, but the fact is, is he was a pretty good race car driver. He was smart, methodical, and he never tore up equipment, which can't be said for a lot of other drivers out there. And honestly, I'm pretty happy that Paul was able to score this victory because he definitely deserved it. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more NASCAR content and leave a like on this video to let me know you enjoyed it. That's all for now. Take care, everyone.